Hello everybody, welcome to the studio. It's me Will's new project. We're going to do a starry night scene in the style of Vincent van Gogh. And it's going to be a scene of Port Merion in North Wales. I've got a nice night photograph. So I'm going to start by putting on background shading straight onto the canvas. This is the canvas I'm using. And I'm going to use a primary blue and a standard black. And I'm going to mix them with a wind gel. Windsor and Newton gels, marvellous things. This is quite a thick one. Liquid original. This is quite a thick gel. And I'm doing this because I want a basic background. Uh, this is not quite the same method that Van Gogh would have used. Um, he held pictures in his head uh, and what I'm trying to do is emulate his work so I'm just going to lay down this background first and then we'll look at his style I'm putting these lines on for my own benefit really, just so I know where everything goes. So, so far this is none of uh, Van Gogh's method, because he went on for this method of using very small strokes of the brush uh, but there's a sort of a method behind this madness mixing the black with the wind gel Was just to put some shape in. That's not the final shape there. So what you can see is, what I'm doing is leaving a bare canvas where there will be lit surfaces. So that is the uh, basic background to our picture. So we're standing in the bottom part of the village and we're looking up at what is a dome here. Uh, a tree, there will be a clock tower here, in there. These are buildings and trees. This is a tree here. This is a building that is lit. And uh, Vincent rather liked doing lit up buildings at night. I don't know why it gave him a sense of comradeship or something, I don't know. Um, there's a road lit up here. And then there are all sorts of little bits of lit areas. So let me just mark them on with So 
Okay. So that is the basic background. And what I'm going to do is leave this to dry for an hour. So you all get a rest from me for the next hour. Because I'm going to clear off and just leave this to dry. And then when I come back, we're going to start working as if we are Vincent van Gogh. That is, we're going to work in short stabs of colour with a fair bit of paint on the brush, working up the feeling, the romance of the night sky and the stars and the half-lit village. I've just had a little move round in the studio uh, because I didn't like the light the way it was. So I've slightly changed the light source by moving round the corner. Um, now, we're going to look at the sky. I'm sort of referring to, I think it's Starry Night at Arles. Uh, Van Gogh did several Starry Night scenes. He did a lot when he was in the asylum. And he had a technique that I'd like to show you. So I'm going to mix um, some blue. He had a, a really nice shade of blue that he mixed. I'm going to mix that up first. Right over, so I've got two palettes here, one with blues and whites, so there's a Prussian blue and there are some regular dark blues and some violet with a squadge of white there and the other palette which is already yellow I've got some yellows, a strong lemon yellow uh, some softer yellows, this is Naples yellow this is a, a newish colour to me, it's cream and then another squadge of white that's for the actual stars. We're going to try uh, a technique that Vincent discovered for himself that he thought was interesting and that gave more depth to his paintings. And not a lot of people know that. So, first of all, I'm just going to use some pale yellow just to make the place where a star may be. And I'm going to leave that at that. Then I'm going to put this brush down with the yellows. And I'm going to put on some blue now. So I'm just going to start with a good sort of nighttime blue. and go round it. This brush is a little bit too large for this. This is a it's a small flat. It's a number six yeah. So I'm gonna go down in a minute to a smaller brush. But let me just put some of this on. So Vincent would try and get the reflection in the sky effect by putting these paints on in this way. So you would paint them on I'm trying to re-emulate the way he discovered this technique so I'm mixing as I go. I'm afraid you can't see me mixing but you can hear me. 
So I'm just remixing the blues all the time. So Vincent would start like that. And then he found this technique. He wouldn't have had a palette knife this shape, I'm afraid, back in those days, but he would then scrape it off and putting it back on to this mixing palette. Scrape the paint off. remixing the paint that I've scraped off here and we'll still use the paints that I've been using as well so this would maybe have some whiting and then we paint back on And he would use short and long strokes. Maybe, maybe put dark places in. I'm sure he would have in his mind where he was going to do certain things. I'm just going over to the yellow paints. So that is the basic beginnings now. So this is one star. And Vincent would be putting multiple stars, some would be white, white surrounded. They would all be slightly different and different sizes. He liked to put the moon in. I'm still not certain about the moon. I might bring the moon down to this part here where there's a tower. But I'm just going to carry on now with some of this sky and we'll build it up. I'm not going to carry on with Vincent's technique, I'm going to use a much faster technique and that is just painting over and over. Go back to this smaller brush. Now some of you know already that I rather like facts. I like facts about art and people. And a lot of people will have noticed that Van Gogh signed his paintings Vincent. I perhaps don't know why that was. And uh, here's the shocking revelation. It came from, we would say in these days, it's a bit of racism. It came from the fact that French people didn't particularly like Dutch people. So he decided not to use the name Van Gogh. It would be an instant uh, flag to French buyers that he was a Dutch artist and Dutch, Dutch art was out of vogue. Uh, and Dutch people were a bit out of vogue at that time in France. So Vincent was accepted uh, across Europe really, right here into Britain. Lots of Vincents were, always were then, still are now. So he decided, because he'd worked in London, he'd lived in London and worked in London, not a lot of people realise that perhaps. And he decided then that the name Vincent was international, so he would use it. Uh, and he used the whole name, painted it on. So that's how that came about.
You see Vincent's dilemma here when he painted things like this and that was that they had become almost like patterns, like designs. And so he had this dilemma of making them look right and that meant moving paint about until the patterns look right. He was a bit of a genius. A genius unrecognised in his lifetime. Um, but recognised after with the help of his brother Teo's wife who has had a very strong belief in Vincent and his work. Teo, Vincent committed suicide as everybody knows but he didn't die immediately, he shot himself in a cornfield and made his way back to his home, living at the asylum I think at the time. Teo was his younger brother and had always tried to look after him. So when Vincent died, Teo's health took a real dip and he died less than two years after Vincent died and left his wife with all the problems of owning hundreds of pieces of unsold art um, and she worked out how she could best promote Vincent and sell his work after the two brothers had both died. I'm just going back to this Vincent technique. So I can see uh, some sense in it. Because uh, if you scrape the paint off in the direction that you require and then start putting it back on, yeah, you start to get the, the sort of feeling for movement that he got. So the place that I'm painting, Vincent wouldn't have known. As it was, uh, the building was begun after his time. This is Port Merion in North Wales. Um, built by uh, Clough Williams Ellis, Sir Clough Williams Ellis he was when he died. Architect, an architect who liked traditional. He was a, a great fan of cob building, a building with mud, mud brick, straw. He tried to get the government to use, right back in the 1920s, to use renewable. building sources. Oh, quite like that one like that. That's what Vincent would have said, that's what I'm saying. So while I've got this colour on the brush, I'm just going to see if I can put the moon in. I think that will be okay there. Yeah, I think that's 
I'm going to do. Leave that there. Vincent used um, long movements which don't appear in the sky. They epitomised, I think, for him, the Milky Way. I think in places like where he was, where he was living, um, the sky is very pure, rather like parts of Cornwall where the sky is very pure and clean. So he would see the Milky Way very strong in the night sky. And I think it gave him that feeling of movement. So we shall put a little bit in for Vincent's benefit, shall we? show this dome up rather nicely. So Port Merion is um, Italianate in style. Uh, Clough. From what I remember Clough never actually finished his studies as an architect uh, but became one. He was he was a well connected person then. Not Welsh, of a Welsh family. Born in uh, Northamptonshire, I think. And uh, when he started practicing as an architect, <clears throat> he spent some time on what I always call the Paradise Coast of Italy. Around Amalfi, those sort of areas. Doing some work, writing. I think his close friend uh, Richard Hughes was writing out there, I think he'd gone out to do something. They both did work for the government on and off. And he really took to the buildings of that coast. Took to those little villages that hang off cliffs on the uh, on the Mediterranean coastline. So um, he, when he came back, his father had left him land, which is the place that Port Merion is on at the moment. Um, that included a um, large farmhouse on the Dewey Ridge estuary, and that is now the Port Marion Hotel. He uh, remodelled it. He was not well off. Not at all well off in those days. As, and he, but he had this dream. I mean, he did a lot of architectural drawings. They're still available for people to see. Brilliant, some of it. And that included this dome. It's marvellous dome. When I was a lot younger, this dome was actually verdigris green. It's been changed now. In fact, the whole structure of the dome, I think, was changed. Uh, and it's now sort of a dark, dark grey with bits of verdigris on. I think they've allowed it to colour naturally. So this is the dome here, the dome in shadow. We will be showing a little bit of detail on it. Uh, there are trees here. Uh, there are more buildings, obviously, and some of these buildings are lit at night. We will come to using a, uh, a system of making them look bright that Vincent used. He liked to go out at night and paint cafes and food stalls. Uh, 
I know a lot of people know of Vincent, they know his work, but uh, he's worth a little bit of research. If you're uh, beginning to paint yourself, or take an interest in art history, and you have to forget all the stories about Vincent's madness. He had that from quite a young man. In fact, possibly born. And that didn't have massive effect on his artwork other than making it even more brilliant because of the struggle he had to make these particular images. Right, we need another star here. Right, so I'm going to keep that yellow on the brush. Let it work into this. Corona. This is the corona of light around. So we work that in there. And I'm just going to go back to my bigger brush. Vincent didn't just work with these strokes. When you look at some of his paintings, later paintings, you think that a lot of his work is short and long strokes. But Damien Hirst look out. Vincent worked in dots as well. Like a lot of impressionists, I know. They all uh, had influences on each other. Uh, and Vincent was influenced by one or two. But probably the major impressionists. So I don't know whether you sort of get the gist of this now, but Vincent was looking, examining, inventing and creating all at the same time. Okay, I find now that I've got to mix some more blue. Just uh, add a little bit more to this. So the colour's gone off a little bit here, so we're going to go over it. And uh, I'm just going to use some white in here. Vincent was really doing 
in this build-up of colour that he did, this um, painting on, scraping off, remixing. He was thickening the colour and then reusing it. Impasto. Yeah, his, own, his own version of impasto work. Impasto comes from, well, we've, we've got a word that comes from it, pastry. Impasto means dough, or dough-like. Uh, a lot of people use the method of having really thick paint and working it hard. Right, I just need some dark areas now. Okay, we'll say that the, uh, the sky part is almost complete. When the details are put in, like I've taken the tower out temporarily, but when the details are put back in, there may be a few things that I want to change along the way. I see already it's a little bit dark here, but we'll get back to that. Start putting some of the village detail in now. So here's my photo of Port Merion that I'm working from. Uh, this is the clock tower, this is the uh, mermaid. Here we've got the Bristol colonnade, above it the dome, and there is the gatehouse over there. Uh, I'm going to work on this area because it's a little bit more complex. So I'm going to put colour on first and then we're going to look at Vincent's styling of it. I've got a grey oil pastel, it's harder than I normally use this one so I don't make too much mess with it and uh, these will be the columns in the colonnade Clough Williams Ellis that built Port Mary rescued this colonnade it was actually in a cemetery in Bristol and uh, it was in terrible condition. So he moved it stone by stone, lock, stock and barrel. Uh, 
and put it into Port Merion here. This was after he'd actually uh, initialised the plans of Port Merion. So he actually fitted it in very well. There are several there, so we'll come to that. And then we've got one, two here. Those will be black eventually, but I want to get that colour on. Then we've got the front of the dome. Here's another rescue piece tacked on to the dome. I think they use it as a shop now. But it's a sort of a small colonnade that he got from somewhere. Always rescuing stuff. Like a long couple of windows here around. Around one, around one. A long one with light coming out. And then there's the top of the dome here. Just going to mark in those edges for now. Use this big brush that I've just wiped off. I've got these basic colours here just to put the colour in. So I start with white here. White in the lighter parts where there are actually up lights and down lights in the colonnade. These colours would be bright enough for Vincent here. He liked his night scenes to be a bit garish. For the lighting to stand out well. But we'll get round to all that. Okay, right, that's the basis. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same dirty brush and put some black in. See the other paint coming out of the, the brush. Right, and those shapes are going to be trees and bushes. I'm just going to put some sap green in, just for the moment. We're going to steal something from Vincent, and that is the Mediterranean Cypress. Um, because he seemed to like the movement in cypress trees and yew trees. Uh, and he did them as clumps uh, leading upwards. 
to almost to show the growth of them, very clever. Okay, so it's time to clean brushes and have a look at a bit of detail. Just going to work on this next bit. So. Scrubbing this on a little bit. So at the bottom here is a very bright light, and the edge there is very bright, so they're both white. Just need another brush, a smaller brush. So we're getting the shades of colour at the moment. We'll make it a little bit more garish and then we'll start using that impasto styling that Vincent used. Just made a wee mistake there. So that should be that should all be dark. So I'm just gonna grab some black. That will be the tower. The tower will carry on up here. Right, so I'm going to, just going to do the end of this house now. This house is called the Mermaid. It has a light here and uh, like a canopy at the end of the house with a statue in it. So let's have a look at all of that. Right, I've been quiet for a while, concentrating. What can I tell you about Vincent? When he was a young man, when he was relatively sane as well, Vincent was an art dealer in the Netherlands. Quite successful too, his bosses liked him. They liked him so much, they transferred him to London. And that appeared to have not been a good thing for Vincent. Because it was in London that he first became a depressive. I think the mental illnesses that he had later were much more powerful. He, he suffered from delusions later on in life. 
but London was where he first had problems really. Um, so he, <clears throat> he went back to the Netherlands and uh, joined a religious organisation, started doing religious work after lots of different moves and changes in his life. He uh, made the decision to go to France. People call his work post-impressionism. Well, I'm not sure about that myself. I think he was an impressionist. He was accepted by the impressionists. They weren't worried about his odd behaviour. You could see that he had lots of ability. That's the basics. There's a little bit of detail needs to go in here. There are more trees going to go in, so they all go in Vincent style. There's a lot of trees up here. This is the end of the mermaid cottage. This green here is where the big chess set is. I may show a little bit of that. And further back here, large pond with a fountain. Uh, now that's lit up at night as well, so I might show a little bit of that. But basically, this is the composition. So now it's just a matter of working it in the way of Vincent. So I've got lots of blobs of colour on here. I'm going to put some detail in. This little house is called the Mermaid. And uh, I'm just going to use this sort of flesh tone pink. So... This is the back of this. The top of the roof. About here. That's about right, so the wall is there. This is in the centre. Okay. Just laying down some colour. We shall go back to using the impasto style.
So we'll start building up this impasto surface. And then coming back to it. So Vincent had this, as I've said before, he had this method of putting paint on and scraping it off. Um, I think mainly that would be to thicken the paint, to give it this doughy texture. This isn't the, um, the final edition of any of this, but I have to get some paint on to start the build up. So I'm now looking at black, blue, and brown mixed together with a touch of white just to put on the roof line. So, where is the roof line going to be? Sort of here. Just so I know where everything is. Now this particular building has, they're actually yew trees here. Then there's a hedge. It goes up here. Hedge on a slope. Goes up there. I'm just going to use a brighter green for a minute. This is just so I can see what I'm doing as, I, as the painting progresses on. So there are. Irish yew trees. Um, Irish yew, because Clough Williams Ellis, the guy who built the place, uh, Irish yew was one of his favourite plants because it was very dramatic, it was slow growing, so he could actually do anything he liked with it in the way of shaping it. He balloon treed some of his Irish ewes.
When you're doing scenes like this, you always have to remember it's night time. It's a night time scene. You have to think about what you would see if you were outdoors in the dark. What you mostly see are shadows of things without too much detail. We sometimes see colours very muted and darkened by the surroundings. So we've got to put all of that into our picture. Okay, so we're building up. Up here will be um, the outlines of buildings. Just the outlines of buildings. I shall pop those in quickly in a minute. And there's a tree here, which I think I'm going to leave out of the picture. I think I'm going to open it to the sky here you can see I've already started on the shadow of the tree, but I may leave it out altogether. We're allowed to use a sort of a dirty grey for the shadowing. This is the clock tower. The clock tower comes down, right the way down to the hedge line almost. So the bottom of the clock tower is about there. The next building to it is here. two roofs, this is Government House, by far my favourite building here. This is the Dolphin. These aren't high enough, are they now? So Government House there. This is the highest roof line in Port Merion, I believe, on that particular one. And then the dolphin's down here, actually. So let's use some dark blue there. It's going to be sky again. And this will be the dolphin roof line here. So we'll see, we'll see a little bit of tree. We'll see a bit of tree around here. Okay. So now I've got an idea where those buildings are. A bit of work back on this sky here uh, because it doesn't fit into the overall plans yet. So okay, it's time to clean up the brushes. I shall, the next thing I shall do will be this bit of sky here and I shall show you a detail that Vincent used on his night skyscapes. I've got paint in two palettes. I've got dark blues and mid blues and white and black and violet. And I've got some different yellows with another blob of white. So we're going to look at something that uh, Vincent would do. And first of all, I'm going to get some black. And I'm going to pop in these outlines, outlines of these buildings. With the black. so that I can then work away from it. Okay, 
So I'm just I'm going to drop this brush now because it's got black on. And go over to clean brushes. So first of all, pick up my yellows here. I've got this buff colour that is called cream in uh, rowdy colours. Just going to put that in. Just going to drop that brush now go to a slightly smaller flat. This is a smaller flat. This is a number I can't read it, I've painted over it, number four flat. I've mixed some white here with some yellow and buff. Just gonna dabble into the dark blues and put some blue here. And paint through it. And there's a shape that Vincent liked, and it started narrow, went broad, and went narrow again. So this was. Uh, this was sort of signifying the light on the horizon, or the light being left by the night sky. Yes, I shall have to go over it again. It's not something you're going to get right the first time. Down here, the same thing. Narrow. Broad. Narrow. And that's dried for after a little while. We'll come back to here and just darken some places and have some very, very dark green in some places. But we'll try and raise the paint a little bit so it catches the light. So these buildings here detail and then detail in Vincent style into this. So he liked to tar show direction with hatching. Draftsman type turn, hatching and cross hatching.
So I'm just trying to put in a movement of cypresses. I think Vincent, he, he liked them in the garden. And I think he saw them as sort of beings having a life of their own and expressed it through this sort of movement. So Vincent liked to work outside a lot and uh, he would always carry all of his stuff everywhere. I said before his brother paid for a lot of his paints and his tools. So he would have them in a case and he would carry a small easel like this one, small easel like this one. To the places that he decided were his next port of call for and uh, he would mix on a large palette he'd use a lot of paint and work it quite quickly he did a lot of paintings in a short period of time i think he did most of his work in the last couple of years of his life so he was uh, He was a depressive. And uh, he suffered illusions. I think delusions, probably people would say. But I think it was uh, probably illusions for Vincent. He saw things in his mind's eye. And I think he would try and work them into his paintings. So he had a sort of a natural brilliance, a, a genius as a painter. This little bit here that I've just done, that really lends itself to this particular impasto style. So I've followed what would be the shape of the dome. Now I just need some darker colour on here. Maybe put a light edge, I don't know. I'm just going to give it a few minutes to harden the surface off, clean up my brushes and I'll be right back with you. I had a change of plan in my mind about this part here. So I, I drew this, this actually exists like this and there is a big light in here and there's a statue of a lady with two children. But I've, I'm going to go even more Vincent with it and make it like his night cafe scenes. 
So I'm going to make this building blue even though it's pink. And put blue in these parts here. And here, slightly more yellow in with the pink. Leaving the green, Vincent would have used green. So poor old Vincent, he wasn't really appreciated in his lifetime. Uh, his mental illness made him annoy people. He was a bit obsessive. And he annoyed people and put people off him. Uh, but it was worse than that for him really, because it was his work. Nobody really appreciated what he was doing. He was actually inventing new styles of painting. And uh, I mean now he's called one of the one of the fathers of modern art. Even though modern art sort of goes back a bit further really, people like Turner. Um, he was extremely inventive. But he had a very miserable life for him. Miserable sort of existence. He had a few girlfriends and whatnot. Uh, but they were always the wrong type of person. Uh, he had one that his father forced him really to give up. And she committed suicide, she threw herself in the river. Not really Vincent's fault, I don't think. I think it was the fact that she was an alcoholic and pretty much in a bad state. Then he had another girlfriend later on that I um, can't remember what nationality was, either Dutch or Austrian. I think. They were intending to get married. And uh, she took strictly. And uh, I think Vincent's the person who saved her life. I think he got help for her quickly. And he realised what she'd done. And of course the girlfriend he had uh, when he lived at the Yellow House, Paul Goga. Wasn't really interested in. And that's not why he cut his ear off. It's one of those infamous things with uh, that people talk about it more, probably more, than his art. His ear off. He lived with Paul Gauguin. Gauguin was uh, an odd man. He deserted his family and went to live in the South Seas. Just did what he liked. He and Vincent used to fight a fair bit because they disagreed over a lot of things. But Vincent relied on his friendship. Like I said, he was a he was an obsessive man, Vincent. And Gauguin, even though they argued, um, kept him sane in a way, kept him level. Uh, Gauguin couldn't stand the obsessive behaviour, and Vincent often got. Violent, violent in his speech, I think more than violent, violent. They did fight sometimes. So Gauguin one day said he couldn't take, he's going back to Paris. Vincent uh, chased him down the street with an open razor.
because he felt that Gauguin was just upsetting him, you know. Whatever. And, um, and of course Gauguin said, well, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to have to go now. You're getting violent, you're getting silly. It's, you know, it isn't going how it should go. It's supposed to have been an artist's community. So, Vincent threatened to hurt himself, um, but in actual fact he was in the middle of a psychotic episode. And the actual cutting off of the piece of ear, the little piece of ear, was more to do with a psychotic episode probably caused because Gauguin was going to go back to Paris. And uh, Vincent, during this episode, parceled up the piece of ear and sent it down to his girlfriend. I don't think she really thought she was his girlfriend in any way. Okay, just putting black on now. Uh, and that is how that story came about. It was the fact that he sent it to his girlfriend that people think when he cut his ear off because his girlfriend rejected him. I think he knew that she rejected him. Uh, I don't think it was anything to do with that. It was all to do with Gauguin leaving. Right, so we're now going over to here, we're up the tower. Uh, the tower is lit at night. If you want to make dark, even look darker, lamp black is your boy. Called lamp black because it used to be made from the soot left on the inside of old oil lamps. got lots of black figuring to go in here uh, and Vincent would use a lot of black figuring on his night scenes so we've got black figuring to go in do some work on this area here just make the dome look a little bit brighter than it is and then it's just the floor areas really and do something with these lights 
and the lit up area under here just needs a bit more colour into it and then we're getting towards the end so Vincent like these night scenes he did lots of pictures of night cafe and uh, he liked to use yellow because it's a sort of a, a strong and daring colour Okay, so we're just going to look at this building. The mermaid is actually pink. This is pink. Um, but Vincent liked to put yellow in. And the, the pink of the mermaid actually at night looks orange. So it's a little bit complicated. So I'm going to use all of those and try and get Vincent's effect. I'm going to put some pink back into the wall here and uh, make these little bits of light spread out better. Now Vincent was a quite a prolific worker, most people know, but in actual fact, when it comes to oil paintings, although he produced a lot, probably near to a thousand, he produced most of them in the last two years of his life. So that's when he was really prolific, in the last couple of years of his life. I hope Vincent had plenty of kitchen roll because he was a messy boy to the way he painted. Next thing we're going to look at just up here is the frontage here. It's fairly straightforward I think.
Okay, I'm just going to the bottom because I'm sort of filling in details now. And what, what I'm going to do is lift the painting up and stand it on there for the moment because I just want to get this done here. Put a few pathway colours in. So I'm using this lamp black because Vincent liked to use black outlines a lot, not all the time, but uh, it was a preference of his to outline in black do that for the drama I think of it. I think we can call that done. So this is uh, in the style of Vincent van Gogh and this is Starry Night at Port Merion. So I hope you like it everybody. If you do don't forget to like, comment please. I like a few comments I always answer the comments eventually. And subscribe don't forget subscribing is free I need you to subscribe. And until the next time, it's goodbye from the studio.